Today, we're setting up the Coprint Chroma Set, which adds multicolor printing capability to the Prusa MK3. Before removing Prusa's print head, we place the chroma head adapter we printed onto the bearings, then secure the right belt first, followed by the left belt. Next, we use the original rear part of Prusa's old print head to secure the chroma head adapter in place. Insert metric 3 x 10 mm screws into the slots on the top right and left sides and tighten them using an Allen screwdriver. Then, insert the metric 3 x 10 mm screws in the center and bottom sections to fully secure the part in place. Let's turn the machine to face the front and move on to the step of inserting the square nuts. Insert the M3 square nut into its slot located at the top right corner. Then, insert M3 square nuts into the slots located at the top left and bottom left corners as well. Now let's move on to installing the chroma head. First, we open the front cover and disconnect the fan connector. Then, we align the screw holes on the chroma head with the square nuts on the adapter part. Using M3 by 10 mm screws, secure the chroma head to the square nuts at three points. Now take the front cover of the chroma head, reconnect the fan connector, and close the cover. Now take the metal 8-in-1 module from the box and attach it by twisting it into the slot located on top of the chroma head's extruder. Insert the chroma head connection cable into the slot located at the top. Then use the M3 by 10 mm screws from the box to secure the cable head in place. Now to attach the pre-assembled CX-1 extruder from the box to the four-slot extruder holder, Remove the three screws from the stepper motor to detach it. From the bottom of the four-slot extruder holder we previously printed, insert the stepper motor. Then, place the CX-1 extruder on top and secure it to the motor using three screws, sandwiching the four-slot filament holder in between. After attaching all the extruders in the same way, place the four-slot extruder holder on top of the printer. After adjusting the PTFE tubes from the box, according to the length of your printer, Cut one for each extruder. Then, connect one end to the CX1 extruder and the other end to the corresponding slots on the 8-in-1 module. Finally, attach the blue locking clips included in the box to prevent the PTFE tubes from coming loose. Now, turn the printer around and connect the motor cables to the CX1 extruders. Looking from the back of the printer, connect the extruder cables starting from the far right, making sure to follow the correct order and not mix up the cables. Next, plug the other ends of the cables into the corresponding ports on the back of the chroma pad in order. Then, connect the chroma head cable to its socket on the left side. Finally, unfold the tablet stand and place it on the ground. Now, turn the printer to face the front and place the tablet on the left side. Then, plug in the printer's power cable and press the power button to turn it on. Plug in the chroma pad's power cable as well, then press the power button on the left side to turn it on. After selecting your preferred language, accept the user agreement. Select your time zone, then give your chroma pad a name. This will be the device name visible on the network. Now, on the network page, select the Wi-Fi network you want to connect to, enter the password, and complete the connection. Click the Continue button to proceed to the next step. If any updates are available, install them. If not, simply click Continue to move on. On the printer selection screen, choose the MK3 model under the Prusa brand. On the screen, confirm both options shown for the setup steps. Then click the Next Step button. Now we need to connect the 3D printer to the chroma pad. Use the USB cable to establish the connection. Now switch to your computer to establish an SSH connection. In the terminal, enter the IP address you obtained from the chroma pad's Wi-Fi page to initiate the SSH connection. By default, the SSH password is set to Coprint. Enter Kyo, and when prompted with the warning message, type N to continue. First, type 2 and press Enter, then type 4 and continue. Select Build and Flash option. Select Atmega Avor Microcontroller Architecture, and select it at Mega 2560. Now let's combine the setup and, as shown in the video, proceed to update the printer's firmware. Type 1, then type 1 again and press Enter to proceed. Continue by typing 3, and once you confirm that the USB path of the 3D printer is visible, proceed with the flashing process. Congratulations! We've successfully converted the printer's firmware to Clipper. Now, only a few basic mainsail configurations remain. Let's go ahead and complete them together. 
First, go to CoPrint's GitHub page, navigate to the printer config file section, select the Prusa brand, and download the necessary configuration files for Clipper. Enter the IP address you got from the ChromaPads Wi-Fi tab into your browser to access the Mainsail interface. Go to the Machine section in Mainsail and upload the configuration files you downloaded earlier into this area. Open the printer.cfg file, then click the Devices button in the top right corner. Click Refresh to display the available USB paths. Locate the USB path for your 3D printer and copy it. Then, paste it under the Serial section beneath MCU in the config file. If you're having trouble identifying which path belongs to the printer, unplug the USB cable and refresh the list. The disappearing path will indicate the printer. After plugging it back in and refreshing again, you'll clearly see which one is the correct USB path. We've successfully completed all the configurations. The setup is now ready for printing. All that's left is to paint and slice a model. For this, we'll use the official co-print profile in Orca Slicer. We've imported a classic Ferrari model into Orca Slicer colored the logo red, the background black, and the car itself white. Now let's slice the model and send it to the 3D printer.